Eurosport, the home of cycling. Milan San Remo is the first one-day race on the UCI World Tour calendar and at 291 kilometres the longest. First held in 1907, supported by the Italian sports paper La Gazzetta dello Sport, Milan San Remo has a couple of nicknames. La Primavera, because it's the event of the spring, and La Classicissima, which loosely translates as the Great Classic. The course is predominantly flat, with a few famous hills, including the Turquino at around the halfway mark. The Capi, which are three small hills that come in quick succession, kicking off the beginning of the end of the race. And the most famous, the Cipressa and the Poggio in the last 25 kilometres. The thing that makes it a great race is the suspense that grows towards the end. Will a breakaway succeed or will it come down to a sprint? As the riders say, Milan San Remo is easy to finish but difficult to win. Here are a few things you may not know about the race. In 1960, the Poggio was added, partly because the organisers thought it might break a six-year run of foreign winners. It didn't work. In fact, it was another ten years before Michele Dancelli ended the Italian drought. The most wins by a single rider is seven by Eddie Merckx between 1966 and 1976. In 1979, Roger de Vlaminck had signed for a new team sponsored by Gis Gelati, an Italian ice cream maker. The boss of the company arrived at the start in Milan in a brand new Ferrari and promised de Vlaminck he could have it if he successfully defended his title. De Vlaminck won the race and drove his prize all the way home to Belgium. In 1982, the Cipressa was introduced to shake things up, and it certainly did that. Marc Gomez, a Frenchman who'd only been a professional a few weeks, got in the early break and stayed away to the finish to win. In 1992, Ireland's Sean Kelly won with his famous pursuit of Moreno Argentin on the Poggio. Check it out on YouTube if you haven't seen it. Almost as famous as his daredevil descending was the spectacularly ugly helmet he was wearing. It looked like an upturned mixing bowl. Anyway, what you may not know is that Kelly was sponsored by the helmet manufacturer and was due a big bonus if he won a monument wearing it. Towards the end of the race and shortly before things began to kick off, Kelly dropped back to the team car to collect the helmet and after the race he collected his bonus. In 2004, Eric Zabel thought he'd won for the fifth time but celebrated too soon, lifting his arms off the handlebars in salute of his victory only for Spain's Oscar Ferreira to pip him on the line. Perhaps the closest ever finish though was in 2009 when Mark Cavendish, who was making his debut in the race, outsprinted Heinrich Hausler by millimetres. In 2013, bad weather caused the race to be shortened and they cut around 40 kilometres from the route and the riders were transported further down the road in their team buses. After they resumed, Gerald Cialek won the race. In recent years, the route has been tweaked and in 2015, the finish line returned to the famous Via Roma, which was first used in 1949. Anyway, how do you go about winning Milan San Remo? We thought we'd ask 2014 champion Alexander Kristoff. Yeah, I was not really like a favorite going in there, more like an outsider. Somebody would mention that maybe we could make a result and yeah, I did the same preparation like I did now with Paris and uh, also Qatar Oman and Het News Platkun. I remember years before I was, maybe the year before I was nine or something and I won the sprint from the group. So I knew the race suits me quite well, but, but still the last class was just too tough. But I was the week before feeling good shape during training and also did some intervals with really good numbers and uh, came in there quite confident of my shape, but still not expecting to win. I think that was maybe the most important win in my career because it was the first monument and the first big win, you know. And uh, last year I remember everything was for me, but I think also the year before it was for me if I was still there after Cipressa and also getting into Cipressa, I was protected of for sure, and then they will look if I'm still there after Chipressa, and if I'm there, for sure they go for me. But uh, now I know I can handle it, so for sure this year we will all go for me again. I see my numbers if I do a sprint after six, seven hours, it's not really much lower than if I do it when I'm fresh. Slightly worse, but not a big difference. Can you tell me what those numbers are? No. Or is that a secret? That's a secret. So oh. well, it really depends. You can suddenly, if you're lucky, you can hit almost 2,000 watts in a sprint. But and sometimes I only did to 1,500. Maybe then it depends a bit on the legs and how fresh I am also. And 
also I think a little bit with the gearing. If I hit the gear and then smash down, then the peak power gets really high. <laughs> <laughs> So Milan San Remo, it's a race of patience. You have to wait and wait. There's so much riding to do before even you get to the early climbs. What's the first three or four hours in the peloton like? Are you just trying to stay out of the wind completely, try to have a very stress-free ride? Yeah, there's a lot of transport, especially before Turquino, also for sure after. But uh, yeah, just ride, actually try not to use too much energy try to stay as easy as possible but sometimes it's a little slight wind or something but yeah I don't really think too much about it and just try to get the hours going you know and eat and take care of food and drinks and then uh, getting into these couples and everything is more then you get more to a race rhythm and also I feel Sandram is always really fast like you on the coast there and it's always rolling really well. So for you where does the race really begin? Oh it begins maybe with like 70 when we enter these couples then it starts to get stressful really and uh, then for sure the fight before Cipresa is important and yeah there the race is really on so so uh, like the last 20k maybe before Cipresa is really like almost like if it's going into a sprint So where were you going over the top of the Cipressa? Can you remember? Last year, I think I was the last guy in the back. I was really struggling last year. Um, the year before, I was a little bit feeling better there. But I'm not the first, that's for sure. And then comes the Poggio, which is really the last chance that the attackers have to try and get rid of you guys. What were you thinking when you were going over the Poggio? You're just hoping that nobody manages to break away and, and stay away. Yeah, no, I just have to go as fast as I can and usually it's not enough to be in the among the best or the first guys. So when I won it, I was actually almost dropped a little bit and I came back in the downhill and then straight to the front. So what is nice with this race also because I, it's like you, all different riders can win it actually because if somebody manages to bridge away or get away, then then it's not a sprinter winning and if it comes back together, it's a sprinter winning. So it's very open and a lot of guys have an opportunity. So it makes it also a very great race, I think. It's a very technical descent, though, isn't it? You've got to be careful, particularly in the corners. There's some fast ones and some slow ones. Yeah, there is some dangerous corners there. And uh, I don't really remember every year, but it's always one corner, right corner is quite tight. So talk about the last kilometre then. You're in the position you want to be in, but you don't really know how good your legs are going to be until you start to sprint. So what are you thinking as everything is moving around you? Because when I watch the finish, you're just staying on Paulini's wheel, just patient 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 people are coming left and right but you're not really moving i want to move the last 20 meters so <laughs> so uh, for, sure, for sure i need a position to be able to win i cannot be in the last position so when when i won it i was quite in the front all the time and i was on luca and then i was on philip Schibert, and then they started i was a little bit boxed actually i ran 200 meter but then it opened up for me and i could do my sprint so for me it's just I must find. I must have the position, and I must find a way it's open, so I so I can sprint, and hopefully I just have the better legs than the others. It's quite a beautiful part of the Italian coast. Does that even register with you at all? This looking at the sea and the, you know the countryside, or is that just you're just concentrating on the road? I'm most concentrating on the road. Uh, I, I watched it on television a few years ago, and yeah, it's a very beautiful race. But when I was in it, actually, almost every year I did it was really weather so I didn't really enjoy it. <laughs> Listen to the full episode of the Cycling Podcast every week, available on iTunes and at thecyclingpodcast.com. dot